Well, hello, LifePoint. My name is John Vetter. It is so good to be with you today as we uh, walk through this last week of Jesus's life. So let's dig in together. We're going to begin in Mark chapter 11. Each morning during this week, Jesus is staying with his friends over in Bethany. And uh, each morning he would get up, walk up the ridge, and he'd cross the ridge of the Mount of Olives. He would go down the valley of the Mount of Olives. He would cross the Kidron Valley. And then uh, he would also, then he would go up the steps into the temple courtyard. And he would do this uh, back and forth each day this last week. And so we have one morning where Jesus crosses up on the ridge of the Mount of Olives and he's walking down in the vineyard and he sees a, a fig tree. And he, he, he's looking and, and rummages around in the leaves and he says that scripture says that he's hungry, looking for, a, looking for breakfast maybe, and he doesn't find any fruits. And he gets frustrated by that and he ends up cursing this fig tree because Jesus is coming um, looking for fruits in our lives. He is looking for those that are, are following him and are faithfully following him and, and obeying his commands and living in his word. And when he doesn't see it, um, he's looking for fruit. And so he curses the fig tree off. And he enters into uh, the temple itself, the house of God, and what he sees is, is not people that are following him and, and loving his commands and, and helping the people, helping the community, but what he finds is a people um, that, are, that are all about themselves. He finds a people that are all about um, satisfying their own needs, their own desires, and using the house of God as a, as a place to, to gain money and gain wealth, and they're exploiting the people. And in his anger, that righteous anger, we see he, he um, gets rid of everyone in there that is doing things apart from um, what God has commanded to be happening in, in his temple, in his house, which is to be a house of prayer for all nations. And so we, we see again that righteous anger of Jesus that he's looking for those that are worshiping um, in, his, in, in spirit and in truth and following his commands. And when he doesn't see it, he judges that. In Mark chapter seven and verse six, it says this, and he said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And you know, we, we see that Jesus is looking for those that not just honor them with their lips, that the, the day before as Jesus walked down the Mount of Olives, the people laid the palm branches down and, and praised him, Hosanna in the highest, and they were excited for this coming king. So they praised him with their lips, but their hearts were far from him. Their actions were far from the com keeping the commandments of God. And we see that as Jesus enters the temple and um, the money changers are, are exploiting the house of God and the house of prayer of his father. And, and so we really, um, Jesus makes it very clear this last week of his life that when he's coming uh, back to his bride, he's coming back to a bride, a church that is not just honoring him with their lips, but is honoring him with their lives. And so the question today is, are you honoring him with your lips only? Or are you honoring him with your life? If, there, if, if there's a disconnect between the two, with what you're saying about Jesus and your actions and, and what's truly in your heart and your love for him, then we've got to, um, we've got to ask ourselves that question and dig deep within ourselves. Um, are we honoring him with our lips only or are we honoring him with our lives as well?